We've just watched Daisy Geyser erupt and we're going to head back towards the main trail that runs between Morning Glory and All Faithful. We came in on this trail, we hiked up from the Grand Loop Road. But while we're up here, we're going to be heading off to check out the main system. All faithful in off in the background over there. trail ahead of us, if you turn right, you would head up in the general direction of the buildings at Old Faithful, and if you turn left, as we're going to do, you'll make your way down towards Morning Glory. So that is the trail back up towards Old Faithful, and just so you can orientate yourself, we can see giant geyser through the trees, very distinctive geyser really only is maybe half a geyser at the moment. And then if we carry on in this direction, we'll be coming to Grotto Geyser on our right shortly. That's where you can see all that steam. Here we are passing Grotto. And if you head off in that direction, that's towards the so-called Geyser Hill. Geyser Hill is where Grand Geyser particularly is, but also Vent and Turban, amongst others, Spasmodic Geyser. And this is Grotto again. Cone Geyser. The cone is formed out of Sinta, and Sinta in this part of Yellowstone gets brought up from underground at the rate of about an inch every hundred years or so, so two and a half centimeters. So if, if we estimate that that is say six feet tall, say 72 inches, that makes it approximately 7,200 years old. That's just a guess and it's a fun way to do things. It's not necessarily that accurate. This is where you would turn off to go to Riverside Geyser. And this is Little Spa Geyser, although it looks more like a hot, a hot spring now, doesn't it? This started off as a beautiful sunny day, and now the weather has turned a bit, unfortunately. Notice how beautifully blue and clear that hot spring is with the warmer colors, the oranges and the browns right at the edge. Then if we look, take a look at this hot spring over here, this is probably something like Morning Glory. That's a very healthy hot spring. That one may be dying looking at the abundance of uh, warmer colors. And I'll explain more about that when we get to Morning Glory. We've just passed the turn off to Riverside Geyser which is behind us on the right, and we're continuing on our way down to Morning Glory Pool. If we go upstream along the Firehole River, we can see Riverside right over there. And we're getting pretty close to Morning Glory. Old Faithful is back up that way. And the Firehole River is flowing out of the Upper Geyser Basin. As I mentioned before, the weather turns a little bit on us. Blue skies and sunshine have given way to those really dark grey clouds as we approach Morning Glory. Yeah, 
Morning Glory is really an amazing colour, isn't it? But the reason it is such an amazing colour is that the pool is dying, the hot spring is dying. What happens is, when a pool is very, very hot, like some of those very blue ones that I've shown you, there's very few organisms, organisms that can live in there. There's a few what's called thermophiles, which are basically heat-loving bacteria, which can survive in there. But when the pool's plumbing starts to get clogged up, or when earthquakes, for example, affect the plumbing of the pool, it means that less and less hot water is able to get up to the top. The temperature of the hot spring starts cooling down and more and more living organisms are able to survive. So when you see a pool that has all these brilliant colors, unfortunately, it does mean that it is dying. The really healthy pools are the ones that are more of that vivid blue color or very, very clear. Thank you.